Good evening. This is the video I did this morning. There's a couple of comments I want to, uh, I don't know, take a crack at. The first one is by Priscilla's POV, but we'll do the first one second and the second one first. The second one's by uh, First Amendment Tests. Now, in this, in my video, I was directing my comments. I was trying to address the statements made by the California Supreme Court. And I was showing that there are no laws, there are no racist laws on the books in California specifically, but in the U.S. generally. There haven't been racist laws on the books since, I don't know, it, the latest they could have been on the books would have been probably the 60s uh, with the civil rights, the civil rights amendments uh, coming out, preventing a lot of the racism. From being from being in the law. Now I did I did broaden my statements as I sometimes do, probably inartfully, um, and I mentioned that Cal, uh, that the U.S. generally speaking is not racist. California specifically, we're not a racist state. We're just not. We're a very we're a melting pot state. Um, every single mayor, every single town council, every single uh, senator, or excuse me, assemblyman. I mean, there's no, there are no, there are no racists being elected in California or being appointed. It's just not happening. So, me being inartful probably led to uh, this statement. Now that now that I see his response to it, um, Merb doth protest too much. Methinks, no. <laughs> so. I'm going to be as charitable as I can because I have sat down for dinner with First Amendment tests and I like him as a person and I respect him as a person. Um, apparently that's not two ways, but okay. So I said, show me the racism. I'll wait. So his statement was fairly vague and my statement was fairly vague. Again, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. So then he gish gallops me with these and these are all... There's one, two, three, four, five Wikipedia articles. One, two, three, four, five Wikipedia articles, a Business Insider article, and a YouTube video because pff, why not? So then, then we're going to go up to the to this one. This is cute. Now explain to me the sufferings involved in childbearing. Apparently, racism is so bad that black people need epidurals. I, I, that's all I can understand from this. Be sure to include all the areas of confusion on your part too. Ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, thanks. I know how childbirth works, um, but I appreciate you condescending and patronizing me like that. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, but again, I try to. I try to directly answer on point her whatever that is. Because again, what I was talking about was in the law. Not, I'm not saying, that, I have never said there are no racist people. Obviously there are racist people. David Duke exists. Louis Farrakhan exists. Linda Sarsour exists. There are racist people out there. My point was and is that they are a small minority of the country. The country, generally speaking, is not racist. The country, generally speaking, well, the country does not have racist laws as far as I'm aware. And if there are racist laws, show them to me. I mean, this is this isn't me saying this isn't me saying that uh, I'm unwilling to address racism. I'm saying show it to me. We can't take action until you actually show me the racism. Now, we can't legislate away. The First Amendment exists. I love the First Amendment. It exists. People have a right to their opinion. But show me the racism. Show me the racism in politics. Let's get racists out of politics. Show me the racism in statutes. Let's get racist statutes out of there. Show me the racist Supreme Court opinions. Let's get those overturned. Show me the racism. And then she gives me, she gives me some uh, anecdotal story about, about how a woman called her the N-bomb. Oh my God. Someone called her a name. 
That's that's the best she's got. There's her there's her smoking gun. Well, obviously the United States is racist because somebody called her the N bomb. Okay, I mean, I can say I've been called racial slurs before. I've been called the N bomb before. Huh. Since I had a predators to support the claim where a statement does not constitute an argument, I'm supposed to prove that there are no that there are no laws that are racist. Okay, take the subset or take the set of every single law that is currently on the books and in force today and show me the racist law. I can't I can't show you something that doesn't exist my premise is there are no racist laws my premise is that the supreme court is not racist that the california supreme court is not racist there is no there is no racism that they can address the the racism that they can address is addressed by in california the feha it's addressed by uh the ralph act the unra act unra act the bain act it's addressed by it's addressed by title oh crap i forget the i forget the uh, federal court ones but there are there are specific laws in place the 14th amendment there are specific laws in place that address these whatever would be racist things that people do except they're allowed to have an opinion and they're allowed by the first amendment to state their opinion is that enough of an argument for you I'd review why I subscribe to this dude. Oh, I don't, I don't like to hear people who have, who have conflicting opinions. I understand. I subscribe because I like his legal analysis. Yeah, I was talking about the California Supreme Court. As for his politics, I think it's fair to say he doesn't have his finger on the polls. Uh, okay. I guess. I don't know. Democrats are going to win California. Is that close enough? He asked me to show him the racism. Uh huh. And I responded by posting several links, each of which describes numerous incidents of racism. I somehow doubt he'll respond. Well, guess what, buckaroo? Guess what, buddy boy? Here's your response. Link number one, Charleston church shooting. Dylan Roof. you got to start with Dylan Roof if you're going to claim the United States is racist. Dylan Roof is the poster boy. And let's see what happened with Dylan Roof. Um, let's see. In here, uh, America celebrated. No. Uh, he, he got pardoned by... He got pardoned by Trump. No, um, uh, people people rallied. I get it. I get it. We're gonna find in here where people rallied to support Dylan Roof. Uh, context of racism. Okay, memorials. Oh, okay. Here we go. They built a memorial to Dylan Roof. Oh, oh no. Oh no. They built a memorial to the victims. Okay. Community response. Community response. I came out to support Dylan Roof. Um, now, Black Lives Matter protests, questions are raised about the security of black churches. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nine artists from across the United States created portraits of the victims. Yeah. Uh-huh. Survivors of the shooting sued the FBI for inadvertently enabling Roof to purchase the gun. Okay. Uh, other investigations. Okay. Okay. Well, reactions. Okay. So here, here is where we're going to see the support for Dylan Roof. Charleston Mayor Joseph P. Riley denounced the attack. Wait. Oh, hmm. Nikki, she's a Republican. She's going to be racist, right? She said, while we do not yet know all of the details, we do know that we'll never understand what motivates anyone to enter our places of worship and take the life of another. Please join us in lifting up the victims and their families with our love and prayers. Wait, that said victims. Is Dylan Roof the victim? I'm getting confused in here because I'm not seeing anybody except for Dylan Roof himself be the racist here. President Barack Obama said in Charleston, blah, 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 innocent people killed, yada, yada. United States Department of Justice fast, fast-tracked a crime, victim crime assistance formula grant of $29 million to the South Carolina government. I mean, so racist, much wow. Uh, his family, obviously Dylan, Dylan Roos families, they're going to come out and they're going to be like, he's our boy, we love him anyway, right? His family issued a statement expressing their shock and grief at his actions. Even his family, even his family came out against him. Religious community all against him. Others all against him. Everybody denounces him. Uh, all, at least 18 candidates and prospective candidates for the 2016 U.S. presidential election expressed reactions through various media 
addresses and addresses i guess according to npr blah 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 they found different blah 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 republicans point at mental illness and referring to it as a tragic but random act that's so racist for them to say it's tragic um so you know even rhodesians worldwide uh came out against him uh there was a, there was an alleged this see, see this is a this is this is our society now. Uh, there was a retaliatory attack, but we have to call it alleged uh, because you know the the suspect was black. Reportedly said he wanted to kill ten white people, and referenced Roof and the Pan American flag in a note he left in his car. But obviously, obviously, uh, this is a right wing conspiracy of of some sort. So, uh, you know, Dylan Roof liked the Confederate flag, so uh, they removed the flag from the state house grounds. Uh, retailers ended the sale of the flag. They removed monuments and memorials related to the Confederacy. Uh, Earl Holt, apparently, uh, Roof credited Earl Holt's website uh, for shaping Roof's views. So Ted Cruz, Rick Santorum, Rand Paul, uh, who have all condemned his racially biased motives, returned the money. Twelve other Republican office holders also announced they'd be returning or donating Holt's contributions. Crazy, crazy! All that support, and then, and then, since apparently Dylan Roof is so loved and respected, Dylan Roof was attacked. Obviously, obviously, he's been sentenced to death because you know we need to, we need to save this this cherished icon of white supremacy or something. Said nobody ever, uh, but he was he was beaten by a fellow inmate. Now get this. I'm not a conspiracy theory nut, um, but the assailant was identified as a 25-year-old African-American, Dwayne Marion Stafford, who was awaiting trial on charges of first-degree assault and strong-armed robbery. Stafford was able to exit his unlocked cell, get through a steel cell door with a narrow vertical window, and go down the stairs to the jail's protective custody unit to reach Roof. At the time of the attack, Roof was alone after two detention officers assigned to be with him left. One being on break, the other being called away to do a task. Crazy how that happened. Well, it's all right, kids. It's all right, because I'm sure that if anybody, if anybody attacks such a cherished symbol of the United States as Roof, that they're going to get, you know, they're going to get the death sentence, obviously. Oh, no, wait. Because he did this, he was released on bond. He attacked somebody in prison. He committed he committed an assault and a battery in prison while awaiting while awaiting charges, well, or while awaiting trial on charges of uh, first degree assault and strong arm robbery. Strong arm robbery is a felony. I'm sure first degree assault is going to be a felony too. But then you know what? Let's get him out on bond because what the hell, right? And I'm sure, and he was released on bond. So you know somebody came up with 10k. Somebody came up with 10K to get him out on bond. He was released. They didn't just offer him the bond. He was released on it. So there you go. Then we got Unite the Right. This is link number two. Let's look at it just make, so you can see there's Unite the Right rally. Unite the Right rally was not billed as a KKK rally when it was, when it was formed. How do I know this? Well, for one black supporter, Unite the Right rally was a matter of free speech. Watson, who is black, said he felt it was important to stand with the group to support freedom of speech. He thought it was about freedom of speech. Because why? Why did he think it was about freedom of speech? Because their build, what they told people they were there to do, is protest the decision of the Charlottesville Council to their order to remove Confederate monuments and memorials from public spaces, which they were doing as a result of the Charlotte or Charlestown shooting, Charleston, Charlestown, whatever shooting. Because if you remember, they were going to remove monuments to the Confederacy. And then what well, I guess we'll get into this. And then this one also supports the same narrative. Um, this is from Mike. So, you know, it's not a, not a right wing source. Chauncey Alcorn is not a, this guy is not a right wing dude. I mean, he's he's not pro racism. Oklahoma country boy Andrew Duncombe, also known as Black Rebel, is a staunch defender of the Confederate flag. Yes, there are black people who like the heritage 
associated with the South and things associated with the South. And they don't necessarily like the hate aspect, but they, you know, Dukes of Hazard used to have a Confederate flag on their car. And they actually had shows in the Dukes of Hazard uh, TV show where they, they denounced racism. Anyway, uh, which he wears on his clothes and routinely flies at conservative rallies, including the Unite the Right rally gathering in Charlottesville, Virginia. So he was there, another black guy. And as he said, the product... Oh, as he and the Proud Boys battle Antifa around the country shoulder to shoulder, Duncombe told Mike he was unaware Nazis would be at Unite the Right and that he does not agree with their cause. And I believe him. So people didn't know about it. So it was a terrible, it was a terrible fiasco. Um, there was, I don't know if anybody remembers, but at the time there was, uh, there was the alt-right and it was undergoing a schism. Apparently the alt-right had been founded initially by Richard Spencer as a uh, as a white supremacist movement uh and then other people like milo yiannopoulos who is married to a black man a gay a gay jew married to a black man uh they they picked it up because they didn't understand the context behind it and they started calling themselves alt-right or maybe they just started calling themselves all right not knowing there was that other uh, uh white supremacist thing behind it and uh there's a bunch of stupid people this uh clam bake alaska or something like that Something like Clam Bake Alaska. Tim? Tim something or the other. I don't remember his name. But anyway, there was a bunch of them. And then there was the schism, and, and they realized that they were being associated with uh, white supremacists. And then they tried to become the alt-light. And I don't know what I don't know what they're doing now, but it was, uh, it was a thing. So I can understand back, back then in 2017 why it would be a thing. So what happened? Bad things happened, but I'm sure I'm sure that everybody came out and and supported all this all these uh, Nazis and things like that. There was criticism of the police handling of the rally, vigils and protests. Uh, uh, many groups organized vigils and demonstrations in a number of cities across the country with a variety of goals, including showing support for those against white supremacy, pushing for the removal of Confederate monuments and denouncing fascism and actions and statements by the president of the United States. Oh, and they talk about what the president said in here, because you know, you know, since he's Trump, he's the biggest racist ever after he became the presidential nominee. Before that, I mean, there's a bunch of pictures of him with Sharpton and, and Jesse Jackson and stuff. So he said, we all must be united and condemn all that hate stands for. I think everybody agrees with that statement. There's no place for this kind of violence in America. I think everybody agrees with that statement. Let's come together as one. Eh, it's a platitude. It's meaningless. He said, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. I think we all agree with that. And he said, on many sides, on many sides. Two things that are underreported. One is that Antifa was there, and Antifa does tend to start shit. They, they cause violence. They, they attack people bike lock stuff i mean burning buildings i mean antifa is a group of bad dudes and i condemn those bad dudes as well and he said on many sides on many sides because he didn't call out specifically the uh the right apparently he's evil but you got to remember that uh this guy here was on the right and this guy here was on the right and he was at that rally so i don't personally fault trump for saying what he said uh, so then, um, let's see, consequences, financial costs, statue removals. They started, they removed statutes. The violence in Charlottesville accelerated the removal of public Confederate statutes from many U.S. cities. It's almost like people don't like racists. About 20 monuments were removed in the weeks immediately following the rally. It's, it's amazing. I mean, just, you know, crazy. Local politics. Local politics, a left-wing political coalition became ascendant in local pol politics with the aim of overturning what they considered age-old racial and economic injustice. Nikuya Walker, one of the local activists who charged into a city council meeting days after the rally to confront city leadership, was elected mayor. I mean, obviously, obviously the city didn't like him, the state didn't like him, the country didn't like him. Oh, my, there was a bark. The fireworks are going off. Um, let's see. Somewhere in here, the uh, the senators and 
uh, governor's political response. Governor Tim Kaine expressed support for free speech but condemned the rally. Virginia Governor uh, Terry McAuliffe, flanked by Charlottesville Mayor Michael Singer and Charlottesville's police chief, directly addressed the rally participants. I have a message to tell all the white supremacists and Nazis who came to Charlottesville today. Our message is plain and simple. Go home. You're not wanted in this great commonwealth. Uh, University of Virginia Center for Politics, Atlanta Mayor, German Chancellor Angela Merkel denounced it. White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon called the far right irrelevant. Um, the ugly white nationalized epitomized by the racist violence in Charlottesville. Uh, Ethno-nationalism. It's losers. It's a fringe element. I think the media plays it up too much. And we got to crush it, you know, help crush it more. These guys are a collection of clowns. Oh, even Steve Bannon didn't like it. Religious responses, blah, blah, blah. Academic responses, blah, blah, blah. Even the leaders of several branches of the United States Armed Forces took to Twitter to denounce the march. I mean, there was there was not a single person who was pro the racism there. And then they wanted the 2018 anniversary rally. They asked for a permit to hold the rally back in Charlottesville. They were told to pound sand. No. Why? Well, obviously, Charlottesville doesn't like a bunch of racists marching through their city because America's not racist. Crazy talk. And then they so say they did it in uh, D.C. and 30 supporters showed up. Three zero. That is not a misstatement. Up to 30, which means 30 is a high number. Up to 30. Counter-protesters demonstrated against the rally. Their numbers numbered in the thousands, up to 30,000 plus, up to 30,000 plus, up to 30,000 plus. I mean, it's not it's not like this thing was uh, was welcomed by the American people. And then we got racially motivated violence against African African Americans. Great! Oh, look at all these! Oh my God, this is this is just crazy! Oh, there's another page. Oh, just crazy! Two whole pages. There are 200 pages out of 231. 231 total pages. Uh, let's see. Let's see. 1910, 1909. 231 pages out of all of it. Are you gonna? Are you kidding me? Oh, here's your here's your racially motivated violence against Hispanic and Latino Americans. You remember the Zoot Suit riots, don't you, boys? From 1943, you remember those? These are 21st century attacks. At least, at least, it's in the 21st century. Christ! So there's been 22 attacks on synagogues and Jewish communal organizations. Craziness. So, you know, there are racists out there. There are racists out there. I want to remind everybody that there are racists out there from every color, every creed, every race has their own racists out there. These only say that there are racists out there. I've never said there weren't racists out there. But if you could find a grand total of 231 pages of racially motivated violence against African Americans... That's not that bad, especially when it goes back for freaking ever. 1909, 1910, 1912, 1917, 1919, 1919, 1919, 1943, 1968, 19... Oh, hey, you know, at least this one was in the last 50 years. I mean, congratulations, right? Anyway, the KKK, the KKK, just the KKK is, is racially motivated violence against African Americans. I guess, whatever. Uh, then there's this one. I have skipped this right now. Um, we'll get to it. But then there's this one. This is just the same thing, a different page on it. Um, the Daily Stormer website. Oh, yeah. Unite the Right. Daily Stormer website. Somewhere in here. Online responses. Domain registrar GoDaddy demanded the Daily Stormer remove its website's domain to another provider after editor Andrew Anglin described the car ramming victim in derogatory terms. 
The Daily Stormer then moved to Google domains on August 14th. Google canceled the site's registration for violation of its terms of service just over three hours after they registered for the service. I don't even I don't even think they're on the Internet anymore. I think they're, they've been removed from the Internet. PayPal suspended accounts of the right wing extremist groups run by several of the rally organizers for violating the website's terms of service. And it's not just PayPal. Uh, uh, there have been a bunch of there have been a bunch of uh, Stripe. I think has stopped payments to uh, racists. Um, oh God, what's that? What's that other one? Um, oh, I can't remember all the names of them. But yeah, I mean, racists get defunded. I mean, it's this isn't. This is you're proving my point. Your very web pages prove my point that America is not a racist country. Finally, we have this one. This is the last, but certainly not the least of them. This is 15 racist incidents from across the world of soccer. If you have to go to the world of soccer to get racist incidents where people said bad things and, and hurt hurt players feelings. I mean, OK. It's terrible. Too bad none of them are in the U.S. Anyway, I think I've proved my point. Thank you for watching and have a great day.